So now let's understand the satellite and with regard to the forces acting on it. Now, if it is moving in a circular orbit, you all know that there has to be a force towards the center. There has to be a force towards the center. If it is moving in a circle, there has to be a force and this force is a centripetal force. Now, this centripetal force will be provided by the gravitational force, isn't it? Right? So, that's it. The centripetal force will be provided by the gravitational force. Okay. Now, if we know that, that the centripetal force is being provided by the gravitational force, can I have an expression of speed of the satellite? So, that is the first thing that we are going to derive. What we know so far? We know that the gravitational force can be written as G capital M, let us say capital M is the mass of the planet, small m is the mass of the satellite, divided by R square, where R is the radius of this orbit. Okay. We know that this gravitational force is the one which is providing the centripetal force whose formula can be written as m v square by r if it is moving with velocity v. Now, since it is moving with velocity v in the orbit, can I write it as v o or orbital velocity? Okay. So, the velocity with which the satellite moves in the orbit is called as the orbital velocity. Okay. Now, what we can say? Both of them are equal. So, if I equate g m small m by r square is equal to m v o square by r, this r r gets cancelled, this m m gets cancelled and whoa, we have now the formula of orbital velocity which is equal to root over of g m by r, g m by r, right? And to your surprise, this value has to be constant for a particular value of the orbit, isn't it? See, g m constant and r, r is the radius in which this is moving and it is moving in a circle. So, every time the distance from the center to the satellite is always equal to r, perfect. So, v o is called as the orbital velocity. Such simple is this derivation. But what is more important is the result. The result is very important, okay. Now, we say that there are different types of orbit. If I talk in context to Earth, we have got uh, the low Earth orbit, the mid Earth orbit and the geostationary orbit. Okay. So, generally when we are using satellites for navigation purposes or for some useful purposes, we need the satellites to be close to the surface of the Earth so that we can get all these high resolution data and the images that we are looking for, correct? So, generally, the value of this small r is equal to capital R, where capital R is nothing but the radius of the planet itself, okay? If you think about it, most of the satellites, they are a few hundred kilometers above the surface, if I'm talking about the Earth, right? Of course, we are talking about artificial man-made satellites now. So, in that case, what we can write, what we had got as the expression of orbital velocity, root over of g m by small r. And if this small r is much closer to capital R, can I replace it? And can I say that v o is equal to g m by capital R? All right, we can say that, no problem. Okay, now we know that this g m can be replaced with g r squared, correct? Where g is the acceleration due to gravity at this planet. Because we know the formula of acceleration due to gravity is g m by r squared. So, we can write g m is equal to g r squared. No problem, okay? So, if I can replace that, then I can get root over of g r squared divided by r. And you see the relation. Orbital velocity is root over of g times r. Again, a very famous equation, okay, in terms of acceleration due to gravity. And remember, this is not the acceleration due to gravity on the surface of the Earth. We are talking about any general planet as such, okay. We will come to Earth also and we will check that what is the value of acceleration due to gravity for the Earth. We will check that, don't worry. But when you look at this formula, doesn't it remind us of some other velocity that we had seen, okay, I'm not going to uh, take off the curtain right now, but yes, we have seen something similar, right? 
we'll, we'll figure that out, what we have seen. Okay, in context to Earth, if you replace the value of G with the value of acceleration due to gravity on the Earth, we find out that the value of orbital velocity comes approximately equal to 7.9 kilometers per second, which is obviously less than the escape velocity. If it is more than or equal to escape velocity, it's definitely going to escape. Now, as I was talking about the escape velocity, you know, there has to be some kind of a relation between orbital velocity and escape velocity because if you increase it further, then definitely it's going to escape out. Okay. So now, the relation between escape velocity and the orbital velocity in context to the earth, can I say the value of escape velocity was equal to root over of 2 gr? We have seen this many a times, okay. The value of orbital velocity is equal to root gr, correct. So if I divide, what do I get? V escape divided by V orbital is equal to root 2, which definitely shows that the escape velocity is root 2 times of the orbital velocity and certainly the escape velocity is greater than orbital velocity. No problem, okay. The escape velocity has to be greater than the orbital velocity. Perfect. But this is the relation that exists between, between the orbital velocity and the escape velocity. So, so many times we have seen in a question that they might not give you the value of orbital velocity, but they will ask question based on that. Rather, they would be giving you the value of the escape velocity or vice versa, anything. <laughs> okay. All right. So, you should understand how to get one from another and what kind of relation that exists between the two, okay. After calculating the speed of the satellite, the next thing that we would move on to calculate is the time period of the satellite, the time taken for one complete revolution, okay. Let's find that out. Well, we know the time period T is equal to 2 pi r divided by V and which V? Orbital velocity, okay then I can write t is equal to 2 pi r and we know the formula of orbital velocity, isn't it? That is equal to root over of gm by r. Just now we have found that out. Root over of gm by r. So if I substitute this, I can write t is equal to 2 pi r root over of gm by r, correct? Now I can take this r up because this is r to the power half and add in the numerator, you have got r to the power 1. So, that will be equal to r to the power of 1 and a half. So, I can rewrite this as t is equal to 2 pi r to the power of 3 by 2 by root over of g. Okay, no problem. Now, again, when you look at this expression, you can definitely conclude that if you square on both the sides, you are going to get the same expression which we have got in case of Kepler's law of time periods and that is why I told you there that you can definitely apply in that question of the satellites, you can apply the Kepler's law, okay. So, whether it is a circular orbit or elliptical orbit, this law of time period is valid. That is t square is directly proportional to the cube of the mean distance, okay. All right. So, this is one expression. If you like it, you can keep it, not a problem. Otherwise, we can also get this expression by saying that, okay, for those satellites which are very close to the Earth. So, this is the general expression. If the satellite is closer to the planet or the Earth, when I'm talking in context to Earth, you understand that I'm talking about the Earth and the satellite, but we can have even for some other planet in general. So, when that be the case, all we have to do is replace small r with a capital R. You understand what you have to do, correct? So, we are going to get, in that case, we can write the formula that is t is equal to 2 pi capital R to the power of 3 by 2 divided by root over of gm, root over of gm. And as we usually do it, what we are, what we are supposed to find, express this in form of acceleration due to gravity, right? So, acceleration due to gravity, again, if you take for this particular planet as g, you can write it as gm by r squared now, okay, because now we are saying that this is very close to the surface. What we get? Gm can be written as gr square and you see what you get? T is equal to 2 pi r to the power of 3 by 2 divided by you have root over gr squared, correct? 
Now, if you modify this, if you modify this, what do you get? T is equal to 2 pi root over of R by G. Very, very important formula. Very important formula in context to numericals. Okay, they'll give you the value of R, they'll give you the value of acceleration due to gravity on the surface of a particular planet and then they will ask you what is the time period of the satellite. Direct formula substituting the values and getting the answer. This is what you have to do. All right. So yes, in gravitation, there are lots of results. I totally agree. Okay. I'm not denying the fact that in gravitation, a lot of results are not there. No, it's there. I totally agree. But the good thing or the bright side of this is that when a question is asked, it's directly based on these results. It's directly based on these formulas. So it's all about practicing some 10 questions of the NEAT level and you find out that every question asks you the same result, the same formula. Okay, it's a very straightforward type of result oriented questions which are being asked from this particular topic. Okay, so don't, don't panic by seeing so many results. That's what I can, you know, tell you. Write down all the results, write it a couple of times, write it two times, three times, four times, till you get a nick of it and then just practice some 10, 15 questions based on one result and then you are done with. The moment you see the question, you know the result, you just have to plug in the values and get the answer because you don't need to do anything extra, okay? You don't have to apply any anything else. Most of the questions that we have seen have been result oriented. So you need to remember the results.